what are the rights and responsibilities of free speech? Free speech. This is me now. This is you, yeah. yeah. Okay, look. Uh, once again, I don't want to repeat what I, I, I said, but still I, I have to start with uh, this. The starting point, and I would say, because you were speaking about Muslim-majority countries and the West, my take on what is happening in the West as well as at what is happening in Muslim-majority countries is that we need to be clear, freedom of expression should be protected in Muslim majority countries as well as in the West. For me, there is no double standard. So if you are, and by, for example, I am, don't agree with anything which has to do with uh, apostasy or blasphemy. When I was asked by uh, uh, the ISISCO and the Muslim, the uh, International Islamic Conference, to promote laws for blasphemy in the West, I say, no, that's not the right way. It's not going to solve the problem. It's not by adding law and preventing people from speaking that we will solve the problem. So freedom of expression should be protected here. And all the, 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 the situations you mentioned, I think that Muslims should be quite clear. We have to be critical with dictatorships. We have to be critical with Muslim majority countries by saying what is happening in Pakistan, what is happening in Saudi Arabia or in Qatar. I took a position which was very clear on the poet who was jailed because he was criticizing the, the government. I think we have to be clear on this. Freedom of expression is a right. It should be a, a, a constitutional right. And we have to protect this in Muslim majority countries as well as in the West. And for the Muslims, and especially in the West, they have, this is what the, 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 the way I was, uh, I was putting it, uh, and I started talking about this in, in uh, Denmark when I was, straight, I was there one week after the cartoon uh, controversy started. I said to the Muslim, this is my sentence, the phrase I put it, take an intellectual critical distance. Don't react to this, just say you don't like it, but this is part of the debate in France or in Denmark or in Europe. To the point that what we have to acknowledge is that in France, as well as in Denmark, and then in the Netherlands, if, and even here in this country, in the UK, the Muslims, when they are dealing with uh, criticism, their reaction is in majority quite reasonable. They are not today. It's not the same as when uh, uh, it happened with Salman Rushdie. And by the way, my position in Salman Rushdie was to criticize the Iranian fatwa by saying this is not an, a religious fatwa, it's a political one, and I don't agree with this. He has the right to express himself. This was my position. So don't reduce our criticism of a way of using free, uh, freedom of speech as being completely against freedom of expression. So I think that this is something that we have to nurture everywhere. And to be critical with what is done in the name of Islam in many Muslim majority countries. That's the starting point of the discussion. So I'm not going to promote freedom of expression in the West and keep silent with the lack of freedom of expression in Muslim majority countries from the Gulf state to our allies here because very often we speak about freedom of expression but many are silent when they are dealing with dictators who are which are our allies that's the reality Gulf states are the allies of the of the West so we don't speak about this we don't care about what is happening to the people who are in jail in political terms as well as in intellectual terms because it's also it also has to do with politics Having said that now, uh, I also think that with, uh, in this I'm following Gandhi when he first got the charter for the uh, Declaration of Human, uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, he responded by saying, my mother told me that with every right you have, there is a duty. And I think that, yes, when we are in a pluralistic society, and you look at this room, people are coming from all over the world with different backgrounds, different uh, religions. I think that you have the right to speak the way you want, but you also have some responsibility the way you use your rights. And this is where I think that there are things that are legally possible, but ethically silly. Yes, you have the right to, for example, I got people who came to me in the Netherlands say, they are criticizing Islam, we are going to criticize the Jewish tradition and criticize the Holocaust by showing that you cannot touch this, this is sacred. I said, that's not the answer. Of course you can 
uh, uh, mock the, the, the suffering of the people. Do you think that this is ethical? I can't do that, but it's silly. Am I going to do this? Am I going to criticize the religions or the suffering of the people? I think that there is an ethical way of dealing with your rights. It's legal, but it's silly to do it. So just be respectful, be uh, respectful towards the sensitivity of the people, and this has to do with education. <coughs> Civic education means know your rights, but know how to deal with your rights. You have the right to insult, but don't do it. You have the right to mock the people, but don't do it. Don't do this because it's not helping us to live together. So pluralism is not only about uh, an accumulation of rights, it's also an understanding of our civic responsibility towards our fellow uh, uh, brothers and sisters in humanity and our fellow citizens. So when, for example, I was dealing with the people in Charlie Hebdo, I said, it's fine, you can do it, but do you think that this is sensible? Do you think that this is, what it ha this is, this is going to help us to live together? So I would like people like you to be part of the discussion, not in a confrontational way by saying, this is my right and I have to do to we, the right to do it. Yes, you have the right. And I would prefer to have this open space where we respect each other, we listen to our sensitivity, and there is something which is called collective psychology. And I was in India. You know, there are not Muslims in majority there. And, and, and a, a Hindu was telling me, you know what, there is something which is coming from the West, which is not our sensitivity. We don't laugh at religions. We don't laugh at spirituality. And he was telling me from a cultural, a religious background. I think that this is also part of our living together. We should listen to this. We should know the, 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 our responsibility towards this. So I would say that the right uh, civic culture in our societies, and I'm also saying this for Muslim majority countries, has to do with, uh, has to do with uh, protecting the rights, the freedom of speech, and by the way, there is also something which you have to say, and we have to repeat this. There is nothing like absolute freedom of speech. Nothing in any society. There are things that you can't say, and racism is not acceptable, uh, insulting and slander, this is illegal. So we have, to, we have a framework within which we are working. Within this, we don't need more law, we just need more education. So you know what? Being obsessed with your rights could be sometimes very arrogant and nurturing ignorance of the other. I would prefer more education about the knowledge of the other. And I know something from my life. I traveled a lot. The more I know about the people, the more responsible I am with my, rights to, my right to speak. I'm more, I'm, it doesn't mean that it's censorship. It's just sensitivity, respect, understanding. The more you travel, the more you are very cautious with, of course I can say it, but I know that it's going to hurt you, and living together doesn't start with hurting the people. It starts with more education, more knowledge. Your rights are your rights, but the way you use them is also something which is essential. And I would tell you something, which is the great majority of the people, the great majority of the people agree with this. They agree with this quite naturally. They, they get the sense that, yes, you can say it by why. Why are you going to hurt the people just for the sake of showing that you, are, uh, you have this freedom of expression? So more education, more respect, and less obsession with my rights and more understanding of our living together. This is the way I would put our responsibility towards freedom of speech. Thank you. Thank you for that. I now would like to repeat the question, what are the rights and responsibilities of free speech? Maram, you have eight minutes. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, when we're talking about the rights and responsibilities of free speech, there is no R or we. Uh, you know, you don't represent all Muslims, and I don't represent all ex-Muslims and atheists. Obviously, there are differences of opinion amongst every group and community. And so, uh, you know, uh, the reality of the matter is that 
this conflation between Islam as an idea that can be criticized, Islamism as a far-right political movement, which is the fascism of our era, in my opinion. It represents, you know, whether it's the Muslim Brotherhood, whether it's the Iranian regime, whether it's ISIS, whether it's the Saudi regime. Um, it, it's a far-right political movement that uses lovely flowery words, often doublespeak, to defend the rights of the Islamists by pretending that they are defending the rights of all Muslims. There is no ROE, there is no ROE. Uh, there are many, many Muslims who are languishing in prisons and facing uh, the death penalty for criticizing Islam, not even criticizing Islam. You have 27 Qurani Muslims in the Sudan. Uh, they uh, believe that the Quran is holy. They question the Hadith. They are now facing the death penalty. This is not just a question for ex-Muslims and atheists. There are many Muslims who face, uh, you know, the wrath of the Islamist movement. Um, so I think one of the things that's often done is that these three are conflated together and therefore if you criticize Islam or you draw a cartoon as Charlie Hebdo did, you know, here's the cover of uh, uh, after the attack on Charlie Hebdo, uh, which is actually a, a statement on fanaticism, not on Muhammad, Islam's prophet. Um, you know, so when you see something like that, it's not automatic that every Muslim is offended by Charlie Hebdo. There are, for example, journalists in Turkey who printed the Charlie Hebdo cartoon. There, are, there was a press, Iranian state-owned press, that printed the Charlie Hebdo cartoons and was shut down as a result. There were lawyers and journalists who tried to rally in defense of Charlie Hebdo in Iran and were stopped and beaten back by security agents. You know, so, and there were cartoonists from across the Arab world who showed their solidarity with Charlie and they were able to say Je suis Charlie. You know, that doesn't mean that they're siding with every reactionary head of state that silences free speech, that censors free speech by pretending to side with Charlie, the Saudi government coming and siding with Charlie when it's murdering its free thinkers there. But, but what I'm saying is that there is no us and we. There are many Muslims who defend Charlie because in defending Charlie, they see that they are defending themselves. Because if Charlie cannot criticize Islam in, a sec in the secular West, how, what chance do people have who are defending the right to speak in countries under Sharia law, in countries under blasphemy laws, in countries under apostasy laws? 14 countries punish apostas apostates to death. 20 punish blasphemers to death. This is not, you know, just to talk about racism. Racism is huge. And don't forget, it affects all of us, including ex-Muslims. Do you think the racist and fascist can distinguish between any of us? They can't even tell a Sikh from a Muslim. We're all the same to them. We're the other. We're the uncivilized, savage hordes trying to take over and Islamicize their, their white Christian Europe. We're all treated that way. I am often labeled an undercover jihadi merely for saying that you cannot equate all Muslims with Islamism. Is, uh, many Muslims are free thinkers and secularists and have stood by me and defended my right to speak at risk to their lives. To say that this is, you know, I'm bringing in the Muslim majority countries and we're talking about Europe, look, you know very well the Muslim Brotherhood travels all over the world because it sees Islamism is a global movement. The violence is global. It affects people in Ni Nigeria, in Mali, in Cameroon, in Iran, in Saudi Arabia. Mosques are blown up by the jihadis. Schools are blown up by the jihadis. And not only just the jihadis, Sharia law discriminates against women. There are many women, Muslim women, fighting against discriminatory family laws, against gender segregation, against compulsory veiling. You know that. That, that is the reality for many people. So to say that we can't bring these two together, or that saying that is emotional, I think misses the point. I think there are many in this country that benefit from pretending that Muslim equals Islamist. They don't. In my opinion, they don't. 
and I have many family members and friends and people who are struggling with me against Sharia law for Raif Badawi's freedom, as well as against gender segregation at universities here in Britain who are also Muslim. There is no us and we. This is the problem with identity politics. You think to defend the rights of people, you have to defend Islam and Islamism, no. You have to defend political and social ideals for equality, for freedom of expression, and that includes defending the rights of Muslims and ex-Muslims. I'm sorry, can I ask for just a I'm sorry, if I can just finish and then. Um, uh, and then to say that, you know, speaking of this reality, this violence, this indiscriminate violence against countless human beings for decades, you know, there are mass graves in Iran of generations that have been slaughtered by this movement. There are generations slaughtered in Algeria in many places. To say that the, these are emotional recountings of things is unfair. And to say that you're playing victim when you say this is also unfair. My point is that these are not victims. I am not a victim. I am someone who is a dissenter and who resists. And I think it is impor important to remember that this is not just about Charlie. This is about the resistance and dissent of many of us in Muslim majority countries and right here in Europe that are only merely asking for the right to speak. This is not about targeting a minority. We are also, many dissenters are minorities within minorities. And racism is not the only context. Fundamentalism is too. You cannot conjure away the jihadi violence and terror. You cannot conjure away Sharia laws and its effects on millions of people because you want to only focus on racism. Racism is important, we have to fight it. You cannot, you cannot ignore it. But do not hide behind a defense of a minority and in effect what you're doing is defending Islamism. For me, I think free expression is key here. It's the only way that many of us are able to speak and to breathe and to challenge that which is oppressing us. And therefore, I think it should be free for everyone. It should be unlimited. I don't agree in any double standards. I think unless there is incitement to violence, and a lot of Islamists actually incite violence, unless there is incitement to violence, it should be free. It, is, it cannot be free unless it is free for everyone. But especially if it is free for Islamists, it should be free for the dissenters as well. Thank you very much. Before we move to questions from the floor, Professor Ramadan, would you like to respond to that? And then, Ram, you will have a chance to respond to you. Yeah, I, I had a, a question, because there are lots of implicit things that are in your talk. You keep on repeating Muslims and Islamists. So you will just respond to this question. In all what I said now, you have the impression that I am an Islamist. This is what you are implicitly repeating. No, I, I believe that. I'm not implicitly repeating it. So, Sorry. Just to be very clear. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah. That, thank you. You're welcome. Like this, it's clear. Yeah. And uh, now you have to prove it. In all what I said, I want you to be clear. And by the way, you know that you didn't respond to the question. The, the third question was missed. Well, don't worry. I. I I know, yeah. I know, you will, you will they, come. They, they won't understand a word I said, so it's fine. No, no, but the, the last question was very important. Well, it was the I most said, important I think one. free expression is important So, and can I ask you something? Yeah. I want you, in a clear way, without implicit statement, to tell me where and when, in what I said tonight, there is something that you can call Islamist. By this, you have to define Islamist. Okay? I want this. The second thing, which for me it's uh, problematic in all what you are saying, I was not saying we and you, us and them. I was talking to you by saying from your position. And by the way, you will find me in your support in anything that you have to say here in the Muslim majority country, I, went, I will defend your right to say what you have to say. That's the starting point of the discussion. 
But yes, there is a we and there is a them. How? Not by saying we Muslims versus the West, no. My position here tonight is to say lots of the people who are here who are not religious, some of them are Muslims, other are Christians, are Jews, could come together and in the name of freedom of expression could say you are free to speak but you have to be respectful of the others. This has nothing to do with Muslims versus the others. It is human rights and no double standard. So the last thing, the last thing is, you said there is no double standard. Have you been against Charlie Hebdo when they fired Sine because he said something about Sarkozy's son? Were you there? If not, why? I think when we're talking about the question of free expression, when you say you will defend my right to say but, but you must be respectful, but there are responsibilities. I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say but. But there needs to be responsibility in what is said. The but is a form of nicely restricting free expression saying that one who criticizes religion offends one's you know, the sensibilities of some doesn't take into account my sensibilities. I am offended when you go on TV and do not call for an end to stoning, but merely for a moratorium. Oh, I, am offended. So I am offended when you defend segregated swimming pools and you tell people that they should only shake hands if they have to with the opposite sex. It offends my sensibilities too, but that's fine. I can handle it. What I'm saying is that when we discuss free expression and we add buts to it, it is a way of censorship. It doesn't mean we don't respect each other as people. We must respect each other as people, irrespective of our beliefs. We must, we must. For me, I think while ideas are not sacred, human beings should be. But respecting people doesn't necessarily mean respecting ideas. We don't have to do that. You don't like my ideas. I may not like your ideas. That's fine. But if we start restricting what we can and cannot say with buts, we're not going to be able to give the possibility to speak freely. And we need to speak freely. We need to speak freely. <laughs> Again, I'm not with, I don't subscribe to this whole idea of clash of civilizations, us versus them. I think that there are many Muslims, ex-Muslims, non-Muslims who are secularists, who are fighting the theocrats, the Islamists. The goal of the Islamists are to impose their project wherever they can, their theocratic project. Wherever they have the slightest amount of power, it is the end of free thought, the end of blasphemy, the end of apostasy, the end of women's rights. Therefore, what the only thing, the only thing that most people have, that we all have in response to this movement, which is a fascist movement from the Muslim Brotherhood to, the, to ISIS to the Islamic Republic of Iran, is free expression. So please do not tell me, speak, but respect my sensibilities. Speak, but please don't offend me. Speak, but don't uh, be Islamophobic. Do not incite hatred, which is not, in my opinion, I'm challenging hatred. But that's what it's called in this day and age. You. When you say but, it's a restriction, and I think we should speak freely as long as no violence is being incited. But let's hope the Islamists can manage that. <laughs>